And as Adika said, we, uh, we, we got a whole lot of y'all this year. And so the first award that we are going to give is, uh, is for the rookie team of the year. And uh, this one was uh, like, Y'all are so amazing, but I gotta say, this, uh, this was a choice that sort of made itself. Uh, we're gonna shout out a team who actually, due to their travel constraints, couldn't even be here tonight. So universe willing, they will be streaming this. Uh, so we're going to shout out a team who, in their first year, with uh, only about three or four months to play with, with coaches who could only show up for about one or two practices, per month or who had to be Skyped in, still managed to show up to every bout looking like they did not do five hours round trip to be here, looking like they just came fresh and ready, making their way in their first year all the way to semis. So please make some noise for the rookie team of the year recipients, the team from Norfolk High School. Hey. <laughs> now, as that's right, thank y'all. Y'all, they felt that in Norfolk, thank you. Uh, so, uh, for, for the remaining awards, there's gonna be a real ridiculous protocol uh, that involves shiny things and sugar, so it can't possibly be wrong, right? So, uh, what is going to happen for the folks who are here, who are about to receive awards, uh, you will come up, uh, the lovely Ruth will hand you your award, which is in fact, a shiny foil wrapped pop tart uh, that will be autographed. Uh, then you will get shuttled across the stage to have your picture taken with it, because that's how we do here. Uh, so uh, we are uh, we're going to move into uh, our recipients for the uh, the Spirit of the Slam team award. Our rookie and uh, Spirit of the Slam individual awards will be announced at the end of the show. Uh, but we're going to shout out two teams whose uh, whose commitment to what really makes LTAB work uh, was just really, really evident and and could really be felt. Uh, so Zadika is going to going to throw out uh, our first one. All right, so first for Spirit of the Slam. You have to understand this is not about the work you put in, it is. It's about the people who are hugging you at the bottom of the stage. It's about the people who come to that night and they do the best that they can and they make you love them. Not because it's nothing you've ever heard before, but sometimes it's a different way you've heard it because they're wonderful humans and they emanate that wherever they are. And when you're doing poems about mathematics or about self-love, those things are so important because one, we gotta figure out how to you know, get through life and two, if you do not love yourself, life is so much harder and these students learned it. So. All of you, give it up for Brian. Who cares? So, so here's where it gets tricky, right? Y'all smile, because you're about to be in this. That's right. P.S. audience, you're the backdrop. <laughs> so well done, yeah, give it up for yourselves for being pretty. Excellent. Oh yeah, P.S., um, your picture's getting taken with a Polaroid, because those still exist, and we have one. Uh, yeah. Yup. All right, uh, and uh, I, I have the self-serving pleasure of getting to announce the, uh, the other recipient of the Spirit of the Slam team award. Uh, and uh, th these, are, these are babies who I got to watch really just come into their own as humans uh, over this year. It is, it's, it's, it's one thing to wish luck and congratulate everybody who you can find who's in your bout and these folks did that. It is another thing to receive word that one of your, uh, your teammates has received devastating news that day and decide that a brand new ink still wet on the page poem for, uh, for her mother was much more important than any chance at winning the bout. It is another thing to then decide that the best thing you can do in your semis bout is to give handwritten cards wishing luck and congratulating all of your competitors uh, these babies did all of that, so please just make such loving noise as we welcome to the stage your other recipients of Spirit of the Slam, the team from Omaha Northwest!
And, uh, and that's it for us. Uh, yep. Uh, and so to, uh, to present the next showcase poet, uh, it is an honor to bring to the stage two young women who this year trans, uh, transitioned from being LTAB champions to being LTAB coaches. So to introduce the next showcase, please give it up for Ms. Elaine Samsel and Ms. Reagan Myers. for you. Okay, so like Chris said, Elaine and I last year at this time were on final stage performing. <laughs> and this time this year we've had the privilege to be coaches all season. And we were at a brand new school, so they put brand new coaches at a brand new school. And it's honestly been one of the best and most teaching experiences of my life. I think I learned just as much as all those kids did. So. Uh, yeah, our kids uh, took fourth in our first bout. It was a really tough bout, and they didn't lose hope. Uh, they kept going. We asked them what they wanted to do for the next bout, and they said, we want to put on a show. We want to do whatever we can to get everybody up on stage, and they wound up winning. These kids are amazing. They do it for the love of it. I can't have asked for any better kids. The showcase poll we're bringing up for you tonight, um, after I fix the mic, <laughs> He was at every practice, every single one. He wrote uh, like four poems this year. He wrote our group piece for this year. He helped arrange it. He was everybody's friend. He was everybody's supporter. Um, we all love him so much and I am so privileged that he got to be a part of my life and I'm so glad that he got, gets to be here on this stage tonight performing for y'all. Please welcome up Foster Collins. Hello, my name is Foster Collins, and I'm a sophomore at Lincoln Southeast High School. And the title of this piece is Schrodinger Love. I found my love life is a lot like Schrodinger's cat. So long as I don't open the box and tell you how I feel, there's still that chance you're gonna love me. Or maybe that's just me being optimistic. I mean, all I have to do is look at the facts laid out before me to see it's hopeless. You're perfect in the most imperfect of ways, as if when God created you, he didn't know what plans he had in store for you, only they were big ones. And I bet when you came into this terrifying world, Mother Nature heard your cries and she knew another angel had entered the land of the living. You just hadn't gotten your wings yet. You're beautiful in ways I can't describe, which gets really annoying when I'm trying to write poetry about you because I, can't, I keep forgetting if I should compare your hair to the night sky or a redwood forest, or if your eyes should be rainforest canopies or the arctic circle because I'm too busy noticing how when you smile your mouth opens up so I can only see the top row of your teeth and your face folds together like all those love letters I'm never gonna send you. And even when I close my eyes, you're still there laughing. Your laugh, I find so adorable. Every time I'm near you, I get love songs stuck in my head. And as beautiful a singer Celine Dion is, my heart won't go on without you because my brain is too busy replacing the names and love stories with our own to try and see reason. And then I get a moment of clarity. When the head tries to sabotage the heart, and I'm reminded of things like, you don't even like poetry, but that can't be true because you haven't heard mine. And you could have anybody you want, but if that's true, then why did you go to homecoming by yourself? Sometimes I forget that you don't love me yet. And I, have to, and I have to catch myself before I do something stupid, like talk to you. And other times, I lay in bed at night and I wondered what it'd be like if I found myself in a world where you did love me. But I have to remember that this is just a love story I tell myself because I live in the real world and living in the real world means listening to real words and you've got those real words on your rosemary lips. And every, time I look, every step I take in your direction, I hear those words. Every time I look into your eyes, those syllables come to life. And every time I say your name, those 13 letters float in the space between us like opening the box and finding another dead cat. People tell me I should go for it. If love's not gonna come to me, then I should go to love. But I can't do that. Because I'm afraid. 
I'm scared of those words. I'm afraid of those syllables that have so far only lived in my nightmares. I'm afraid they're going to come to life and Mother Nature's going to hear my cries and she's going to know another angel just had his wings clipped. You've got those razor blade words on your rosemary lips. I hear them in my nightmares. Dude, I'm straight. <laughs>